Uh, just to give you some context, we have over 5,000 employees under the umbrella of the Department of Safety. And that includes uniformed personnel, civilians, and retirees. We consume over two-thirds of the city's budget. And that should tell you how important the priority of safety is in the city and county of Denver. Um, over the past few months, we have convened a series of task forces designed to have a lot of conversation and input and propose solutions to the challenges in the Sheriff's Department, including things around discipline, around well-being. We had a task force that dealt specifically with the use of force policy. And I can tell you that these task forces comprised of not only law enforcement officials, but community uh, members and stakeholders, though who, those who have a best, vested interest in helping us to define solutions uh, to the identified problems, spent hours and hours and hours of their own personal time coming to these task forces and putting their input into some very, what I would call, spirited dialogue at times, uh, putting in their interests, and most important, identifying proposed solutions uh, to problems. So after having four community meetings in four different segments of our community to get public input, because we felt it was very, very important for the community to chime in relative to how they see the direction of the Denver Sheriff's Department and some of their ideas about reform. Uh, after having those conversations and having uh, forms that elicited feedback from the rank and file themselves and also from the command staff of the Denver Sheriff's Department, we did an RFP to solicit some help in us in reform. As a result of that, we did hire outside consultants, a team that we thought was the best one suited to come in and do a top to bottom review of the department. Those teams, uh, their first visit will be here in Denver uh, this coming Monday. And um, the, we've engaged them for 21 weeks. That's how important this work is. Uh, part of their task, after some of the introspection into the department, will be to assist us in identifying a sheriff to lead the department. And we look forward to engaging in that process as we go along the way. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, as uh, some of the things have generated a lot of uh, public concern and a publicity around the department. I do want to mention that there's some good things that have happened inside the Denver Sheriff's Department, and it's not everyone and all folks that uh, are garnering the type of conduct and behavior or exhibiting the type of conduct and behavior that has garnered some of the uh, more media attention, but the sheriff's deputies that show up in that department every single day and they give it their all. Uh, we just had a, a sheriff's deputy last week uh, giving credit and honor and, uh, at Denver City Council for having saved a life inside of the facility itself. It's things like that that go unnoticed, but we certainly don't want to allow that to continue because there are good things aside of the challenges that are going on there. Having said that, um, there are other things that do go on inside of the Department of Safety. I want to mention for a moment our Gang Reduction Initiative of Denver, otherwise known as GRID. Um, GRID facilitates uh, 24 programs designed to address, of course, gang violence inside the city of Denver, particularly through suppression and intervention. Uh, we're glad to announce that the initial work that was done through the GRID effort was uh, recognized by the federal government again. We just received news not long ago that we'll again get a two-year grant in the amount of $2.5 million to continue GRID's work. And so we are excited about that, and we'll continue to do a lot of outreach into our communities um, that really make a difference with regards to the gang community. Those are some of the things, and um, it's never a dull moment. So thank you for allowing me to present to you today.